hello everyone. Uh, today I will give you a short introduction on lacases. They are very, very versatile enzymes, so this short overview is definitely not exhaustive, uh, but it will give you an, an idea about what lacases can do in organic synthesis. Um, Uh, I based my presentation mostly on these three reviews, which I found uh, quite useful. And I will guide you through an introduction, short history, uh, where they are found in nature, how they work and what substrates they like. Uh, and we, we will finish off with types of reactions and a bit about uh, application. So lacases are oxidoreductases that belong to the multinuclear copper-containing oxidases. Uh, they catalyze uh, monoelectronic oxidation of substrates at the expense of molecular oxygen, uh, producing only water as a byproduct. Um, unlike with other oxidases, there is no hydrogen peroxide involved in the story. Uh, typical substrates are phenols and aromatic or aliphatic amines. Uh, lacases are actually one of the oldest enzymes um, to be discovered. So they were first described back in 1883 uh, when Yoshida was studying the properties of urushi. Uh, this is a traditional Japanese uh, varnish that's used to coat and um, like finish mostly wooden objects like bowls, plates, uh, and boxes. And it is derived from juice of the lacquer tree. Uh, and in this extract, uh, the lacases were first um, identified. And except in higher plants, where the enzyme is key for lignification, uh, lacases have been widely studied in fungi, uh, where they contribute to degradation of the lignin. Uh, more recently, many bacterial enzymes have also, be, also been studied. And in bacteria, they provide protection against uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, UV irradiation. And also they have been identified in insects where they, their role is a hardening of the insect cuticle. Um, the reactions catalyzed by lacases proceed by the monoelectronic oxidation of a suitable substrate molecule to the corresponding uh, reactive radical. Um, this is accomplished by four copper atoms that constitute the catalytic core of the enzymes. Uh, three types of copper can be distinguished based on their environment and spectroscopic characteristics. Uh, type 1 is the blue copper. It's paramagnetic and it strongly absorbs at 600 nanometers because of the charge transfer from a neighboring um, sulfur uh, from a cysteine. And this gives the whole enzyme a blue color. Uh, the type 2 copper is not blue, but it is also paramagnetic. Uh, and type 3 uh, are a diamagnetic spin-coupled pair. Uh, so type 1 has the highest redox potential. It ranges from 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 volts, depending on the enzyme. And this is our substrate oxidation site. Uh, it is coordinated by two conserved histidines and one cysteine. Um, the fourth ligand is variable. Uh, and this can be either uh, methionine, leucine, or phenylalanine. And this um, fourth residue actually determines the specific redox potential of um, an enzyme. Uh, the type two and type three coppers form a three nuclear cluster uh, coordinated by several histidines. And this is the site where molecular oxygen is reduced to water. Uh, the architecture of the site is conserved um, and the distance between the type 1 copper and the trinuclear cluster is always around 12 angstroms. Um, in a catalytic cycle, the substrate will bind to the pocket next to the uh, type 1 copper, which then extracts one electron from the substrate. Uh, this electron uh, is relayed through protein functional groups uh, to the trinuclear cluster. Uh, namely to the, through the uh, thiol of the cysteine and then carbonyl and imidazole of, a, of the histidine. Um, the three nuclear cluster actually acts sort of like a battery. Uh, and this battery is charged when four electrons are collected. Then the type three copper atoms will transfer 
uh, these four electrons to the type two copper, which will use them to reduce one molecule of oxygen. Uh, so the overall outcome of the catalytic cycle is a reduction of one molecule uh, of oxygen to two molecules of water and oxidation of four substrate molecules producing four radicals. Uh, the substrate radicals are released from the active site and what happens next and what will be our final product will depend on the properties of the substrate itself and on presence of other molecules in the environment. So traditional lacquer substrates are substituted phenols uh, with a lone electron pair. Um, and the uh, preferred substrates are actually the ones that have groups in the ortho position, so like uh, guaiacol and catechol. Um, however, a well-known natural substrate is lignin. Um, it is known that fungi use lacases to degrade uh, the lignin in the wood. However, lignin is a really big polymer with a very bulky structure. So actually, uh, it cannot fit in the active pocket um, of a lacase. And indeed, if you incubate wood pulp with lacase alone, um, they found that this led only to minor structural changes um, and repolymerization. And furthermore, the non-phenolic parts of lignin have redox potential, which is uh, simply too high to be oxidized by lacases. So um, up to 1.5 uh, volts. Uh, so it's actually an unfavored reaction. But we know that it ha happens in nature. So it was hypothesized that there must be a small molecule which acts as a redox shuttle between the active site of the lacase and the lignin core. Uh, causing degradation and debranching of the polymer. This hypothesis was confirmed uh, and is now known as the lacase mediated system. Um, this really widens the substrate scope to include also substrates that are too large for the active site or that have too high um, redox potentials. So a redox mediator uh, is going to be a small molecule substrate of the lacase that is capable of producing stable radicals uh, that carry out numerous oxidation cycles without degradation and without side reactions. So the mediator is also needed in uh, catalytic amounts. And the scope of the reaction then will depend on the mediator itself. Um, several natural and synthetic uh, mediators have been identified um, and the most effective ones for degradation of lignin are N-heterocycles bearing um, NOH groups, so it's mostly these synthetic ones. Um, they can have three different mechanisms of um, oxidation, so it can be either electron transfer, uh, radical hydrogen transfer, or like in the case of TEMPO, uh, ionic oxidation. This uh, mediator system was actually also used to regenerate a uh, flavo enzyme, uh, which I found quite interesting. Uh, so this redox mediator shuttled electrons between uh, the lact uh, lacase and a flavo enzyme, which was um, a cellobios dehydrogenase um, in this example. Um, all right, so now it's time to talk about what happens to our newly formed uh, substrate radicals after they leave the active site. So as I said, this is radical chemistry. Uh, uh, and basically it has nothing to do with the enzyme anymore because the uh, radical substrates are in the reaction medium, so it depends on the substrate uh, itself. The phenolic radicals uh, can often undergo self-coupling reactions through CC bond formation uh, to form dimers, and this has been exploited for synthesizing uh, derivatives of natural compounds like di dimers of salicylic ester and um, bisphenol A even though in the latter case, you can see that the uh, yield was actually only 16% after four days of um, reaction. 
Also, CO bond formation is possible, um, and the electron delocalization um, in the aromatic group uh, enables radicals to couple at different sites, forming uh, heterogeneous products. So here we have sinapinic acid, which whose oxidation uh, provides only a single product due to steric hindrance of the methoxy group, uh, while a ferulic acid will give us two possible products. Um, and if you oxidize isoeugenol or coniferyl alcohol, you get up to five possible products, a mixture of uh, different dimers and tetramers. So as you can imagine, it will have quite demanding um, analytics, uh, this reaction. <laughs> Um, uh, CN and NN bond formation uh, also happens and uh, they have been used for production of um, azodyes uh, that you can see here. Um, then we can also have a trimerization. Uh, here we have an example of indole where they use a lacase mediated system with uh, tempo and they found that um, Tempo decreased the reaction time by half uh, while giving double um, isolated yield uh, compared to other mediators. Um, and again, uh, depending on the substrate, uh, also heterogeneous uh, products can be formed, like in the case of um, uh, the substrate on the right side. Um, and with the right substrate, we can also get a polymer. Um, so on the right side, you see preparation of artificial urushi, which is this uh, traditional Japanese lacquer that I mentioned um, at the beginning. So it's prepared from uh, catechol derivatives substituted with um, alkyl side chains. Mm. Also polymerization of aniline uh, has been shown. It was accelerated with this um, inorganic mediator. So this is another type of mediator um, that can be used. Um, another use of substrate radicals is for cross-coupling reactions with uh, different molecules where the reactive intermediate, it's sort of um, trapped in another molecule, so it cannot uh, dimerize or polymerize. Um, here we have two cyclization reactions. Both of them start by uh, oxidizing a catechol derivative, uh, which then participates in a Diels-Alder ring closing or in a Michael addition, uh, creating benzofurans. But uh, in a similar reaction, um, instead of a benzofuran, you can also form uh, despiral uh, compounds. Um, another example is a substitution of amines generating um, seven, eight, or six membered rings. Um, so in natural product synthesis, uh, radioselective uh, oxidation of primary alcohols is um, quite important. And uh, this can already be done with tempo alone, but um, if you use it with a lacase, you need tempo only in catalytic amounts. And this approach uh, was actually used uh, on some natural um, glycosides to get the corresponding carbonyl groups um, from alcohols. Um, in this example, we have a formation of a acceptor aldehyde by the lacase. Uh, in situ, which is followed by an aldol addition reaction with um, hydroxyacetone. Um, some research has also been done on oxidation of glycerol, which is um, definitely not a substrate which would be accepted by a lacase on its own, but it works with the lacase tempo system. And uh, here they found that they could control the ratio of formed uh, products by uh, controlling the concentration of tempo. Um, amides can also be oxidized with a uh, lacase mediator system with uh, n hydroxy of thalamid as the mediator. Um, 
And lacases have, have also been used to make derivatives of beta-lactam uh, antibiotics um, from cateholes and the different amino beta-lactams. Um, and also derivatization of amino acids was shown with derivatives of um, hydroquinones and uh, amino acids tryptophan and um, phenylalanine. Um, so amination is especially interesting because um, the N-substituted anilines um, often have pharmacological activities. Uh, for, like, for example, these uh, morpholine derivatives on the right side. Um, and here in, in this reaction between catechol and anilines, uh, they actually used a co-catalytic system with a lacase and a lipase. And actually this reaction also uh, occurred without the lipase, but the lipase increased the yield from uh, like 30% to 50%. Um, and via amination, it's also possible to attach uh, long chain primary amines to um, catechol moieties uh, of different molecules. Um, also, there are reports on CS bond formation between um, naphthohydroquinones and um, alkyl or aryl thiols. And I found interesting this report on um, lacase palladium catalyst. So this substrate is um, an alcohol which is not accepted by lacases, uh, but it is known that the alcohol group can be oxidized with uh, these different palladium complexes. Uh, however, it requires high temperature and high pressure. And by actually putting lacase in the system, the lacase was able to um, oxidize these palladium complexes. And uh, now the reaction could be run at room temperature and atmospheric pressure. Uh, so as you could see, lacases can basically do a little bit of everything. Uh, so also their spectrum of applications is really wide. Um, in the last 10 years, the number of patent applications have been growing and some of the companies which are working on them are um, Novozymes, um, then Danisco, which is a food company, uh, Procter & Gamble and L'Oreal. Um, as for the content of patents, a big portion is focused on lignin because uh, removal, modification, and exploitation of lignin are um, kind of a hot topic right now. Then comes uh, biochemistry and biocatalysis and pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and agrochemicals. And well, this fact that they can do a little bit of everything uh, makes them uniquely suitable for bioremediation because environmental toxins and pollutants often have uh, phenolic components so they can be uh, modified or um, degraded by lacases. Um, so that is it from me uh, today. I can try to answer uh, any questions that you have and uh, thank you for your attention.